안녕하십니까. 저는 서울 에이스 치과 박휘웅입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Park h y u n g of Seoul Ace Dental Clinic. I am honored to be here today as part of the prosthodontics, the part of Austin's master course. Today, I want to talk about full mouth rehabilitation using multiple implants for fully dentulous patients. With increased life expectancy, there are more and more fully dentulous patients. There are many ways to restore fully dentulous cases. Today, I want to talk about the restoration of dentulous patients with implant-supported fixed prosthesis. The modern-day implant has been with us for over 40 years, and this takes a very important part of daily dental treatment. The prognosis is also excellent, so it contributes immensely to patients' oral health. Today, I want to talk about placing multiple implants in fully dentulous patients and providing fixed prosthesis. Ways to restore fully dentulous cases. You can utilize traditional full denture, or you can utilize one or two small number of implants to provide the overdenture. There's a bit of irony if you look at how implant has developed. The first implant was implant placed in fully dentulous case introduced by Dr. Bronemark. After it was confirmed that it can be applied to fully dentulous cases, it was applied to partial dentulous cases moving on to anterior and posterior single implants. If you look at how individual dentists learn about implant, the order is absolute reverse. They start off with comparatively easier single implant cases, moving on to partial edentulous cases where multiple implants are placed, and after sufficient amount of experience and knowledge is garnered, they move on to fully edentulous cases. Ways to restore fully dentulous cases. When utilizing implants, it can largely be divided into two. First is fixed prosthesis, which is the topic of the day. You utilize multiple implants to provide a fixed prosthesis in fully dentulous cases. This is a procedure which is really outstanding and patient's satisfaction level is excellent as well. There's downside as well. If there's a lot of alveolar bone resorption, there can be lack of lip support and it takes a, a lot of time and money and effort. Because of financial reasons, patients may utilize removable prosthesis rather than fixed prosthesis. In this case, two implants will be placed in the lower and implant overdenture will be provided. Because this is removable prosthesis, there are limitations. Compared with traditional full denture, still the stability and support the patient can get is much better so you can reduce the pain of uh, full denture patients in significant ways, and it is very cost effective. However, because this is a removable prosthesis, it has some of the downside of existing full denture, and compared with a fixed prosthesis, maintenance becomes more complicated, so the patient needs to come in more frequently. Today, I want to primarily focus on fixed prosthesis. Fixed prosthesis can also be largely divided into two categories. First is full denture type. This is a fixed full denture. The characteristics of it is that if you take a look at the gingiva, this is added to a fixed prosthesis bridge in pink porcelain or pink resin. The resorbed gingiva is expressed to compensate for it. Because there is a severe vertical alveolar bone loss, teeth tend to be very elongated. Second type is a fixed bridge type. Strictly speaking, there is not major difference between the two. As for the second bridge type, in comparison, 
alveolar resorption is less. So the crown is similar to that of natural teeth. But in principle and functionally, the two do not differ significantly. The category of the two was very clear in the past, but because different materials and methods are used interchangeably, the difference between the two has become more vague. I've talked about how it is divided into two. If you go into more detail, first there is a fixed complete denture type. This is the all on four style, which was used by Brony Mark. Four to five and six implants are placed, and it has full denture. This is a fixed complete denture. This is just without flange. Full denture is fixated on the implant. This can be used when uh, alveolar resorption level is severe. Second is a fixed bridge type. This can also be divided into two. If you place a smaller number of implants, if you place four to five implants, the entire prosthesis needs to be tied in. It becomes cross arch splinting. If you place more number of implants, if the patient is more financially capable or is healthy enough, and if multiple implants can be placed, in this case it becomes a very similar to bridge restoration for natural teeth. Six to eight implants are placed in the lower, and bridge type restoration is provided to the patient. The difference with the left is that you can segment the prosthesis. You can connect about three units together. So this is easier to fabricate and maintenance is easier. It's difficult to say which is more superior or more uncomfortable among the three, depending on patient situation, especially patient age, health, and financial conditions. We can choose amongst these options. Let me explain about the three options in more detail. First is fixed full denture type. Gingival form is expressed and reproduced. There is a structure where it compensates for the resorbed gingiva. Multiple materials can be used. In the past, acryl resin was used frequently. Heat curing resin was used, which was used for full denture cases. Artificial teeth used for full denture can be used here as well. In the same way as fabricating full denture, if you use resin, it can affect durability significantly. Resin or artificial teeth can fracture, frame can fracture, there can be many different mechanical problems, so currently it's not really in use. So these days we either use PFM or we make the entire prosthesis in full zirconia and it is milled and pink coloring is added. Retention type, you can either use a screw retained type or if necessary, cement retained type can be used as well. The pink porcelain portion provides lip support so you get more volume and in terms of patient's profile, it is much more favorable. Another interesting thing is the implant position. If you look at this structure, there is implant body and on top there is teeth. There's a middle structure, there's a meso structure. Implant placement position angle and the position of the tooth on top is not really critical. Yes, we need to place implants in the most ideal position, but it's very difficult to achieve. Even if you do not achieve that goal because there is meso structure, in terms of uh, prosthodontic restoration, you can feel less stressed. It is less constricted in terms of implant placement position. You 
can provide angulation or do a bit of customizing, use a screw abutment and such, you can be more flexible here. This is example of fixed complete denture type. The materials used here is not resin. Casting was done for metal frame and pink porcelain buildup was done. Gingival form was provided and zirconia teeth were fabricated and provided. You can do this method or like a full denture you can use of heat curing resin and align artificial teeth here. I've tried this method, but it was very complicated and expensive, so it's not realistic. In this case, where splinting and tying of all units is necessary, I utilize the zirconia and do milling. The second option amongst the three options is a fixed bridge type. You place multiple implants in this case. The amount of alveolar bone resorption should not be severe. Number of implants, it should be either 6 or 8. The materials that are used in general are the same as the materials used for partial edentulous cases. It can be PFM or all zirconia. You can use a cement retained type as well as screw retained type if necessary. In this case, lip support is not very important. What is important here is implant placement position. It's very important. Implant placement position determines the function and aesthetics of prosthesis. There's the crown and implant placed underneath. In this case, it should be restoration-driven concept. Implant needs to be placed right below the tooth to be restored. If the angle or position slightly differ, you can utilize customized abutment. However, it is very important to place the implant in line with the crown position. In this case, you can place implants freehand, but if you utilize guide systems like one guide, you'll be able to place the implant in a top-down way in a much easier manner. In the case of this patient, visually, there's no major difference with the prosthesis of natural tooth because the crown length and alveolar bone resorption is not severe, so it can provide average anatomical crown length here. Multiple implants have been placed and segmenting have been done. Segmentation has been done between posterior and anterior area. When fabricating prosthesis, you do not do 14 teeth or the entire arch at the same time. If the full arch can be divided into three and restored, then it will be much less stressful for the surgeon. As for fixed bridge type, this is accumulation of partial edentulous treatment cases that we do regularly. Implant restorations may be provided all at once, but depending on the patient, they may be restored with implant treatment whenever a tooth loss occurs, so in the end, they may end up as fully edentulous case. Third is a fixed bridge type using few number of implants. In this case, a financial factor plays in strongly. So I've talked about placing 6 to 8 implants in the lower to be able to do segmentation, especially in the case of lower. The minimum number of implants to restore fully dentulous arch is 4 implants. If you place 4 implants, you cannot segment it, so you need to tie the entire arch. There are a total of 14 teeth in the lower, but using 4 implants to restore 14 Units is close to impossible, so we skip the second molar and provide restoration only up to number 6. The level of ridge resorption may be small, or even if it is over moderate level, it's not going to be a problem. The minimum number of implant to be placed is about 4 to 5 or 6, and the entire arch is 
tied together. You use a PFM or zirconia. When you use zirconia, you need to be selective in choosing cases if the interarch space is not significant and if alveolar bone resorption is not significant. If you provide restoration in the case of bone bridge, joint fracture can occur. So. In that case, it is better to use metal frame with PFM to get better prognosis. Retention type. You can utilize both cement and skirt type. Lip support in the case of lower is not important. Using four implants here, I've intentionally drawn like this. If you provide full arch restoration using four implants, even if one implant fails, the entire prosthesis can be useless. You need to use this kind of restoration for patients with weak masticatory force. For instance, if the antagonist is full denture or RPD with a few number of natural teeth, it may be possible. Implant placement position is very important. As mentioned earlier, the crown length is short. So, it is very important to place the implant accurately to allow for easy prostodontic phase and good prognosis. In order to place implant accurately, guided surgery can be used. In the case of this patient, the four implants have been placed in the lower. The entire arch was splinted. The screw retained prosthesis. PFM prosthesis was delivered. Twelve teeth are all connected, so retrievability is very important to hear. For many different reasons, if you need to dislodge the prosthesis for cleaning or maintenance, if you provide cement retained prosthesis, then retrievability may be a problem. As shown in this case, using screw retained prosthesis would be good if you have placed the four implants perfectly in parallel manner. You may be able to unscrew the screw retained type and retrieve it when necessary. Accurate implant placement is therefore very important. Providing full arch prosthesis with just four implants may cause problems. You need to think of the antagonist as well. You need to do very good job in case selection, and you may use this for very old patients or patients with weak antagonist or with weak masticatory force. If possible, using six to eight implants and segmenting prosthesis would be most standard way to provide treatment. Segmentation is very important in full arch restoration. As shown, you can do segmentation between first and second premolar, and this has been done here as well. Fabrication is easy, and if the extent of prosthesis is limited, the fit can be gained easily. Retrievability can be excellent, and you can also compensate for implant failures due to mandibular flexure or prevent prosthesis fractures. In the case of this patient, this is a case that I've shown you earlier. Segmentation was done here, and cross arch splinting was done up to the anterior premolar area. If you look at the image, multiple methods can be utilized. Implant placement position and segmentation positions can be determined. This is my most preferred position and the number of implants. This is the midline of central incisor and this is canine here. This is a second premolar. After placing like this in the first premolar area, I do cantilever. The prognosis here is very good, and if you place multiple implants here, the distance may not be sufficient. So I provide mesial cantilever. In this case, by doing this, you'll be able to restore full arch in the upper and lower with seven implants each. Because it's segmented, retrievability and prosthesis restoration process becomes much more easier.
In the interior area, I tend to do a cross arch from 3 to 3 because in the interior, in the upper interior area, it is subject to very unfavorable labial force when the lower does protrusive movement. That's why we need crotch arch splinting. So even if you place multiple implants here, if you do segment here or in other areas, rather than doing that, it is better to do cross arch splinting and tying six to seven units. You can utilize this kind of method. You can place more implants. Nine implants can be placed. Number four, six, and seven implants can be placed here. And you can do segmentation between number three and four. The left and right do not need to be symmetrical. It doesn't matter if there is difference between the number of implants placed in left and right. Number four, six, and seven implants have been placed. You can do placement in number four, five, and seven. At times, you can utilize a cantilever, and there can be different combinations. I've talked about restorations in the second molar area when you do implant the placement. And here, for edentulous cases, in the second molar area, there is a drastic slope of gingiva retromolar pad is here and with alveolar bone absorption it becomes very difficult to place implant and it, the mandibular nerve is very close to the number seven at times it is very risky or, or impossible to place implants in number seven in that case you can skip number seven and provide restorations only up to the first molar and provide 12 units you can uh, skip number seven in both upper and lower. The upper is more effective, but you can also form distal cantilever for the upper number seven. Four teeth are formed like this. There is no antagonist for the cantilever, and it is not subject to force, so this is a very stable design. The pontic number seven provides a cheek support, and it provides comfort to the patients. Some people find full arch restoration very stressful and scary. Yes, it is true that restoring full arch requires a lot of experience, knowledge, and skills. Basically, you need to be able to perform implant surgery. And you also need to have concept of the occlusion for full arch restorations, and you need to be able to reproduce it. As we treat partial edentulous cases, we need to enhance our skill, and this is the ultimate step that we need to reach. In the case of fully edentulous cases, because the prior patient's condition was extremely poor, the patient's satisfaction after restoration delivery is very high. Implant treatment itself is excellent, and for edentulous patients, if you provide fixed prosthesis, you can dramatically improve the patient's quality of life as well as the steamic health, and I think this is an excellent procedure. This is a long process, and it takes about six months to one year, and when we are building a huge building, we need to have a precise blueprint. In the same sense, we need to have a plan for each stage for full arch restorations. This can largely be divided into five. First is the diagnostic phase. I believe that diagnostic phase is most crucial. This is a diagnosis and treatment planning process. After that, there's surgical phase and provisional phase. In the case of immediate loading, you do surgical phase and provisional phase on the same day, and this is my preferred method. After that, you provide final prosthesis in restorative phase. It does not end here, and then after that, we need to provide maintenance throughout the patient's life, and we need to provide care so that the implant prosthesis can be maintained. I want to share with you a fully edentulous case from start to finish. 
I've been following up with this patient for about five years and I want to share with you each process. This is a male patient in his 60s and the patient was fully dentureless when he came to me. The patient was not using denture. The patient did not have any experience using denture and didn't want it and wanted to fix the prosthesis. The patient has an excellent alveolar ridge, which we hardly see these days. Alveolar bone condition is very favorable, and the patient is quite young for an edentulous case. The patient was about to attend his children's wedding, and the patient wanted a full restoration before the ceremony. This is diagnostic phase. There are different ways to do diagnosis for fully dentulous cases. You can use analog method or you can utilize digital method. In my case, I thought conventional method would suit me better, so I still use this method frequently. This is complete denture concept. When we restore fully dentulous case with conventional denture, we make a diagnostic model and make a wax rim and take jaw relation record. The tentative occlusal plane is formed, midline is formed, and teeth are aligned. After trying, you check whether it fits the patient aesthetically and functionally. It's the same process. It's a series of trial and error. When this kind of patient first comes in, regardless of how good of a equipment you use and how expensive the equipment may be, we cannot find the right occlusion for the patient at one go. The lower without teeth is like a swing. The lower is connected to the skull via muscle, ligament, and skin tissue. The lower is basically hanging there. The position is very unstable and using teeth you find the right position. By doing this you form jaw relation and occlusion. Wax rim is used to you add and cut, add and cut. After that you form occlusion and mounting is done. You can do teeth alignment in wax rim just like conventional full denture. In the case of this patient, I used CAD CAM method. I scanned the edentulous mounted model and in CAD CAM method, I aligned the teeth. I milled the design with PMMA resin. This is wax denture. This is prosthesis that serves as wax denture. The difference with the full denture is that there is no flange. The most important factors that we need to check in diagnostic phase in fully dentulous case is occlusion and aesthetics. Because there is no flange, unlike the conventional denture, the profile is quite different. There's no flange, so there's no lip support. This is a wax denture without flange, and you test it intraorally. If necessary, you can extend this area, and when you do try in, you can get a more stable position. This is not fully fixated, but you do try in and after you evaluate occlusion, midline, and lip support. The trial denture is equivalent to wax denture, and if you find it appropriate, then you move on to implant placement. I've skipped the middle process, and this is the image on the day of immediate loading. There are many ways to do implant placement. You can segment the entire arch and place implants over the course of several days. In my case, if possible, in the case of full arch cases, I would like to do immediate implant placement and immediate restoration. 
The full arch is connected in the upper, but as for the final prosthesis, it's going to be segmented. In the case of uh, immediate loading, it is essential to do cross arch design. So the, all 12 units have been connected in cross arch design and it has been done in the same way for the lower as well. Temporary abutment was used, screw routine prosthesis was utilized. As for the lower, implants were placed fairly in parallel, so transfer abutment was used and cement retained prosthesis was delivered. The patient suffered, so the surgery was done over the course of two days, but within several days, the patient was able to go from fully dentulous to being able to use a fully fixed provisional restoration. The patient was able to meet with in-laws with these teeth in and participate in the marriage ceremony, so I felt really fulfilled as well. Implant was placed up to number 6 in the upper. So I only placed up to the first molar. I thought about placing it in the second molar, but you can see that there is a very inclined slope and accessibility was not favorable. So I just decided to provide restoration up to the first molar. And I think that was the appropriate decision. As for the lower incisal area, because bone width was narrow, MS implant, one body implants were placed. Two months of uh, healing period was given. If you look at the overall image, from fully dentulous to delivery of final prosthesis, and this is continuation of trial and error. You need to go through several stages of trial and error to fully restore fully dentulous cases, and this is essential. You, at first, you use wax rim and get the tentative occlusal plane and midline. Based on this, you make a trial denture and you utilize this trial denture for surgery. This determines the tooth position and you determine the mesiodistal and buccal lingual position of the implant. Immediate loading was done. The patient was satisfied here, but after immediate loading, the patient may have difficulty in adjusting to the prosthesis or if there's need to adjust the VD. And at times, you may need to adjust buccal lingually due to aesthetic reasons, and you have another opportunity to do that. This is provisional restoration, and after that, the impression is taken on the implant, and CAD CAM abutment is fabricated, new provisional is fabricated. This is a segmented provisional and cement retained prosthesis was fabricated and this is very similar to the final prosthesis. This is the final stage where we can correct potential errors. At this stage, it's just copying the prosthesis in use to fabricate final prosthesis. The contour of the final provisional is copied and made in full zirconia. And within four months, final prosthesis was delivered. This is at one year follow up. If you look at this patient, what stands out is that the patient has a bit of hyperplastic gingiva. There is little gingival resorption, and with just a small amount of calculus, there can be swelling, almost to the point it looks hyperplastic, but there was no severe inflammation, but marginal bone level was nicely maintained, and a prosthesis was segmented between canine and first premolar. A total of 24 units of teeth were delivered in the prosthesis. It's been five years, and it's being nicely maintained. The patient has gained a lot of weight for the past five years. The patient has been eating well and looks much brighter and more good humored. The patient was really grateful. When I look at these patients, I feel really a sense of accomplishment and I find fully dentulous cases really interesting. As shown in the case, 
Restoring fully edentulous patient is like building a huge building. You need a precise design and you need to prepare thoroughly. Diagnostic phase can be divided into several steps. You need to gather diagnostic data. And based on that, you determine the form of final prosthesis ahead. You also need to determine the number of implants and the position where the implants are going to be placed for delivery of such final prosthesis. In order to place the implant in the planned position, you need to determine whether conventional implant surgery itself is enough or whether it requires a sinus lift or bone graft and other advanced surgeries. After that, the treatment plan is finalized. What is very important is that we should not rashly place implants. In close to edentulous patients, we need to place multiple implants and restore function and aesthetics as soon as possible. However, if we move forward too rashly in placing implants, so we need to think of consequences. We need to thoroughly make a plan and come up with a final prosthesis design and then move on to implant the placement phase. I believe guided surgery can be of great help in the diagnostic and treatment planning phase. Guided surgery cannot be used in all cases, but while we are preparing for fully dentulous cases, we can receive different feedback and come up with more thorough preparations. Today, I've talked about providing fixed prosthesis for fully dentulous cases as part of online master course. Austin Implants Master Course addresses different aspects of prosthodontic treatment, and lectures have been provided for years. There are many more lectures that provide wonderful lectures. Today, we have talked about important aspects in addressing fully dentulous cases, and there are many really interesting lectures as well, and I hope you tune into more lectures. I appreciate your attention and thank you for watching.